Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Just finished reading 1 Kings chapter 5. I'll try to find a verse somewhere in here to read, but essentially this is the beginning of the building of the temple of the Lord, the one that David had in mind to build for God from the beginning. Well, I don't know, maybe not from the very beginning of his reign, but from much earlier on in his life, before Absalom, the whole Bathsheba and Uriah thing, before all of that mess occurred, he had it in his heart to build a temple for God. And God was like, uh, your son will do that. And here is the beginning of the building of the temple. He teams up with another king called Hiram. Uh, apparently that dude's the king of Tyre, mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. They got along very well. They even went on to sign a treaty of peace with each other. That's in 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 12. And then they get the labor forces going on. And the labor forces are really big. In verse 14, um, there are 10,000 a month in shifts. One month in Lebanon and two months at home. So that is, those were the Hebrews, Solomon's people. And Adoniram was in charge of the labor force. Verse 15, Solomon had 70,000 who carried burdens and 80,000 who cored stone in the mountains, besides 3,300 from the chiefs of Solomon's deputies who supervised the people who labored in the work. So a ridiculously massive undertaking was underway here. And... The undertaking itself is just, one, I think to myself, again, uh, kind of like what I said yesterday, none of this would have been possible if David himself hadn't been obedient and left quite a legacy for Solomon. And if I remember correctly, David didn't also just say, by the way, Solomon, build this house for the Lord. This is my dream. Live it out for me. I'm pretty sure that David had stockpiled some supplies to kickstart the whole thing off as well. Didn't Solomon obviously had to do plenty of work himself, send out some laborers into the field and into the quarry as well. But as far as I remember, David also set aside some things to make sure that the temple could get going and get started and that there was some kind of a beginning. There were, the plans were there, some of the supplies were there, so a lot of credit still goes to David for this. And also, whenever you're undertaking something ridiculously massive, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. It's going to take time to grow and time to build. and. Sometimes it doesn't work, but if the Lord's with you, uh, things can indeed work out in the end. Although sometimes the Lord himself will also change plans midway and like, you know what? It's not going to quite work out the way you thought it was. Kind of like the way Saul betrayed David and then David ended up having to live on the run for a few years prior to becoming king over Israel. And then he reigned over only Judah. And um, again, I think it was Benjamin within Judah for seven years before all of Israel came over to him. So things didn't quite work out the way he thought they would. Quite, I, I can't imagine David and Matt thought to himself, oh yeah, we're going to go through years and years of torment and chaos and betrayal, and then eventually I'll be king. Humans, we don't see that stuff coming. We're like, okay, this is what the Lord's called us to do. We're going to do it. And we don't think too much about the hardship ahead. And sometimes the Lord's called us to do something great like Solomon is called to build a temple of God. Sometimes we don't consider. Solomon was a wise man, so he probably did the amount of effort and labor that's going to go into that. So, you know, here's to preparation, here's to planning, and here's to having a good inheritance. And for those who didn't have a good inheritance, here's to you. Making a good inheritance for those behind you, for make, for repenting of the of your mistakes in the past, repenting of the mistakes of your parents, those who raised you, acknowledging the wrongs that were done there, and saying you're not going to choose that path, and not just wallow in self pity and remorse and like, well, they did it, I guess I'll just do the same thing, but charting ahead, forging a new path. Here's to you laying a great foundation for your future descendants and those you will leave in your wake. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.